a warm greeting. Today is Saturday, March 2, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. In this video, I will be providing an update on the ENSO conditions in the Pacific region, where we can already see that the El Nino phenomenon is beginning to rapidly weaken. It is anticipated that over the next few months, we will be experiencing neutral ENSO conditions, eventually transitioning towards La Nina for the 2024 hurricane season in the Atlantic region. This, in combination with the unusually warm temperatures persisting over the tropical Atlantic region, may generate exceptionally favorable conditions for a very active hurricane season. In this video, I will also be discussing the temperatures of the tropical Atlantic and the projections from the recently released CANCIPS Global Model. This model shows a very active season for the Atlantic region. If we look at this graph, warmer than usual temperatures are represented by yellow and red, prevailing over the equatorial Pacific region. This indicates that we are still under the influence of the El Nino phenomenon. However, over the past few weeks, we have seen colder than usual water beginning to appear just west of the South American region. This can be seen represented in this graph by these blue colors emerging from Costa Rica and Panama. Remember, this graph shows surface temperature anomalies. If we look deeper, and in a profile over the equatorial Pacific zone, in the following animation, you can see that the warm temperatures that were present over much of the Ecuadorian surface have begun to be displaced by colder water moving up from the ocean depths. During this week, we have observed that these colder than usual temperatures, represented by the color blue, have reached the surface just west of South America, and it is anticipated that over the coming weeks, this cold water will continue to move across central Pacific sectors. This transition towards neutral conditions and the La Nina phenomenon will be accelerated because over the next few weeks, a Kelvin wave combined with a strong phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation will be moving across central Pacific sectors. This event will increase wind speeds from the east, and therefore, favor the continued appearance of colder temperatures near the surface. It is highly likely that during the next month, the El Nino phenomenon will dissipate from the Pacific region. This aligns very well with the projections of the climate models. You can see that the CFS model predicts that the El Nino phenomenon will dissipate rapidly. It is likely that already during the months of April and May, we will have neutral conditions, and eventually, the development of the La Nina phenomenon is forecasted. Potentially, a rather strong La Nina, or what we know as a super La Nina. This is when temperature anomalies in the Nino region 3.4 decrease to 2 degrees Celsius below normal. Remember that this is very important because it is almost certain that we will have neutral conditions or the La Nina phenomenon for the 2024 hurricane season. Historically, we have seen that this results in increased cyclonic activity in the Atlantic Ocean Basin. For example, in this graph, we can see the accumulated cyclonic energy, a measure of cyclonic activity, for different years historically from 1950 to 2020. You can see that neutral ENSO conditions or the development of La Nina favor greater cyclonic activity than usual. While the El Nino phenomenon tends to suppress cyclonic activity in the Atlantic Ocean Basin, it is really concerning to see that the models have a tendency to increasingly strengthen the La Nina phenomenon for the peak of the season, and although there is a possibility of having La Nina during the peak of the season, also note that historically very strong La Nina phenomena represent favorable conditions for active hurricane seasons. However, slightly less active compared to seasons with mild or moderate La Nina phenomena. There is really little difference between cyclonic activity during neutral ENSO conditions or the La Nina phenomenon. If La Nina strengthens significantly, it may result in slightly less activity than if we have neutral or weak La Nina conditions. Regardless of whether we have neutral conditions, weak, moderate, or strong La Nina, the reality is that the tropical Atlantic remains so warm that we will probably still have a very active hurricane season, possibly a hyperactive one. The tropical and subtropical Atlantic region is indeed at record levels of warm temperatures for this time. This can be seen in the following graph, which shows the evolution of North Atlantic temperatures since 1981. You can see that during this year, temperatures have remained at values that have never been recorded before. In fact, it far exceeds what we had last year, which was an extremely warm year, and this caused, even though we had El Nino conditions in the Pacific, the hurricane season in the Atlantic was more active than usual. Now imagine if we have the combination of the La Nina phenomenon along with record temperatures. This basically guarantees that the hurricane season will be hyperactive in the Atlantic. To give you an idea, when we compare the most active years in cyclonic activity that we have on record, for example, in 2005 we had 28 storms, in 2010 we had 19, in 2020 we had 30. When we compare temperature anomalies during these years in the month of February, none come close to what we currently have in the Atlantic region. This is truly very concerning because the most active seasons we have had in history have had temperatures that do not come close to what we currently have during February and March. 
Therefore, we continue to closely monitor updates from global model projections. As recent as this week, the updated projection from the CANSIPS model was released, and you can see that it continues to forecast a very strong La Nina for the months of August, September, and October in the Pacific region. Additionally, Observe the tropical and subtropical regions of the Atlantic with warmer than usual temperature anomalies during the peak of the season. When compared with the run from January, you can see that the new run has a stronger La Nina and also a warmer Atlantic. These trends are bad news for the tropical Atlantic region. And if we zoom in a bit on the tropical Atlantic, observe the Caribbean, very warm, and also the region east of the Lesser Antilles during the peak of the season. These conditions would represent very dangerous conditions for the strengthening and development of tropical cyclones. Again, look at the comparison with the run from the previous month, where the new run has much warmer temperatures, and this trend concerns us quite a bit. On the other hand, look at the following image, which shows projections of precipitation anomalies for the months of August, September, and October. In green, we have anomalies of higher than usual precipitation. Specifically, between the Caribbean and Africa in the tropical Atlantic region, and especially in the Caribbean region, which signify potentially favorable conditions for the development of tropical systems. Similarly, when compared with the projection from the previous month, you can see that it now shows stronger precipitation anomalies above normal, which is also a rather dangerous and worrying trend. And finally, the parameter of atmospheric pressure anomalies. You can see in blue, pressures below normal, which signify more favorable conditions for the formation of tropical cyclones. When compared with the run from the previous month, we also see lower than usual pressure anomalies in the main cyclonic development zone. Therefore, this trend also concerns us quite a bit. If we analyze wind projections at high levels of the atmosphere, you can see that it is projected that during the months of August, September, and October, a very favorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation can establish itself over the Indian Ocean region. If this phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation truly establishes itself over the Indian Ocean and regions of the Eastern Atlantic, this represents the most optimal conditions for an extremely active hurricane season. And although we know that these forecasts are long-term and many things can change, it is truly concerning to see that all models and factors are aligning for the hurricane season to be much more active than usual. Here on Hurricane Info, I will continue to monitor the evolution of these parameters. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can watch the upcoming videos I will be recording over the next few weeks. See you later. I hope everyone has an excellent weekend.